Good morning, everyone. This morning, we have the Ministry of the Knights of Columbus here to light the fourth candle of Advent, which will remain lit for about six hours, and then Advent is over. <laughs> so I would like to invite Fernando to come forward and give an introduction to what the Knights of Columbus is all about. Thank you, Fernando. Now we will have the lighting of the fourth candle. The fourth candle of Advent represents love, the ultimate love of God that he sent his only son to dwell among us. Also called the angel's candle, the fourth candle of Advent is lit, leading us to eagerly await the new kingdom of God on earth on Christmas Day. Thank you, brothers. To those of you here in church, and to those of you watching online, good morning. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Isaiah. The preacher is also Father Isaiah.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As these waning hours of this Advent continue, dear friends, let us quiet our hearts and minds and repent of our sins so as to welcome the Lord Jesus into our heart of hearts. I confess. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. My fault, through my fault, through my most gracious fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay, that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who live and reign with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in the house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people, Israel. I have been with you and wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, he will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Throughout all ages, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, 
you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all ages. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic written writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month of her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I'm the handmaid of the Lord, May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Ours is a father who keeps his promises. 
This is what we contemplate, celebrate this Advent season. That ours is a God, uh, that our God is a Father who keeps his promises. Ours is a God who provides for us, he loves us, he sustains us in being. Ours is a God who desires nothing else if not our well-being and our flourishing. It takes a while because our broken world is a complicated place. But God our Father is, God our Father promises our flourishing and our peace. Ours is a Father who keeps his promises. We remember the great story of Abraham, invited by God into a personal friendship with him. Go, he says, leave your homeland and go to a land that I have promised you. And I will give you a family as numerous as the stars in the sky. And after decades of Abraham and Sarah being childless, comes the son of the promise, Isaac. And from him, Isaac's son, Jacob, and from Jacob, the very nation of Israel. Ours is the father who keeps his promises. We remember the great story of Moses. And during a a famine, the family of Jacob, they flee from the promised land and go to Egypt for food and supplies. And return the Egyptians and slave them. For 400 years, the family of Jacob is enslaved. And for 400 years, they cry out to God for freedom. And finally is born the son of the promise, Moses. And we know Moses' story well enough. The miracles, the plagues, Moses delivering his people from slavery, Moses leading their pilgrimage to the mountain of God. Moses receiving and then dispensing the great law of God for his chosen people. Ours is a God who keeps his promises. We remember the great story of David. In our first reading, we see that King David wants to build a house, a temple for our God. Acknowledging all the good that God has done for him, victory in war, a family, a kingdom to rule. And as God has given David everything, here's David wanting to give something back to God. David wanting to give God his own house building God a temple. And we hear in today's reading, it is not David that will establish a house for God, but it's rather God who will establish a house for David. We remember, we read from our first reading, the Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up you an heir after you, sprung from your loins and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. It is not David that will build a house for God, but it's rather God that will build a house for David. Ours is the father who keeps his promises. And in today's gospel, we we see once again a promise fulfilled. The virgin bearing a son, the son of David, reestablishing the kingship of his father. The kingdom of heaven established among us, Jesus' very presence in our midst. And even now, dear friends, Jesus said that he will be with us always till the end of the age. And here our king reigns with us. Here our king reigns us, encaps in this tabernacle, the promise fulfilled. Jesus' promise fulfilled, Jesus always present among us. Jesus, our King, the Son of the promise. Ours is the Father who keeps his promises. And even now, is God still not fulfilling his promises? Even to this day, are not his promises made manifest? How many families within this sacred chamber, children of the promise, How so many in our parish community, leaving the Philippines, leaving friends and family to pursue the American dream, leaving the security of predictability in the Philippines to take a gamble on life here in the United States. How many of our uncles joining the Navy in World War II to pursue the promises written in the American Constitution? 
How many nurses and engineers flocking to the United States to take a gamble for the betterment for our families? How many of us here, children of the promise? This is the joy that Father Peter spoke about at, uh, in, a, in his homily last week. The joy of the gospel, knowing that God is here to fulfill the promises given to us. Joy, of course, is that electrical undercurrent of our faith. That certainty of knowing that God resides in our heart of hearts. That certainty that God loves us, he wants us, and he is fulfilling his promises in the here and now. And as God has fulfilled his promises so long ago, God has so many more promises to fulfill in our very short lifetimes. As we head into the Christmas vigils in just a few hours from now, let us live in confident hope, confident always in God's promises, confident in Jesus' very presence in our heart of hearts. Confident in the Lord's promises to us, we profess the great faith he has given us as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Holy and became man. Who to our sake was crucified and was Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God of love, you looked with favor upon your servant Mary. Look with favor upon us in the prayers that we bring to you now. For all God's people that are longing for Jesus will be fulfilled this Christmas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local and national civic leaders, that God would bless and guide them in their service to all in our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely and depressed at this time of year, that they may find hope and loving fellowship in this community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, particularly the members of this congregation here today, that we proclaim the good news by word and example, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the repose of the soul of Manuel and Tadora Samara, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our heart, we pray to the Lord. Seeking the intercession of our mother, whom we also celebrate today, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death.
pray, dear friends, that this your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. <clears throat> Graciously make your own, O Lord, the offerings we bring, that partaking of them we be cleansed of our sins and merit to stand ready with pure hearts for the coming in glory of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, Albert, his assistant, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the most glorious virgin, the glories of our Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Amen. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, to receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with this sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and to all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with their holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. To whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, qui tollis peccatum. On you stay, qui tollis peccatum. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold, Timon takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me.
Let us pray. Grant to us to find new vigor, O Lord, in these your wondrous gifts, that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your son's nativity, so we may possess in gladness his everlasting rewards, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Good morning, and please take a bulletin home and look at the Christmas Mass schedule, which begins at 5 p.m. this afternoon. And purchase your New Year's Eve tickets in the parish office after Mass today. The parish office and all facilities will be closed on Monday, Christmas Day, the 25th, and on Tuesday, December 26th. And on Tuesday, the 26th, we'll have one Mass at 9 a.m. Thank you. Please rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you always in the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God.